So this lecture is about, again, about general purpose I.O., how to control it and observe it from the Python program. And we're just going to go through more of the GPIO library, talk more about the functions uh, that we will use from Python to access the pins. So another thing you're going to have to do when you want to access the pins is you're going to, before you can touch the pins, when I say touch them, I mean write code to access them, you need to set the pin direction, right? So we did this with the Arduino. Uh, in, with Raspberry Pi, you're going to call GPI, gpio.setup. So here we have uh, gpio.setup. It's a function, takes two arguments. First argument is pin number, in this case pin number 13, and we're going to make it an output. So gpio.out is the second argument. So we're setting the pin direction. Note you can set gpio.in, it'll be an input, and so on. Uh, this is the same thing as pin mode in the Arduino, if you remember that. Uh, you set pin mode 13 output for an Arduino, it's the equivalent function. So you want to set the pin direction before you use the pin. Then uh, say, now say you've designed it, designed it to, you've made it an output, then you want to assign certain values to it, basically high and low. Uh, in this case, we're going to use true and false. So true is a one, true is high voltage, in our case 3.3 .3 volts. Uh, false is going to be zero volts. And you can just call output, gpio.output. First argument is the pin number. Second argument it is either true or false, depending on if you want it to be high or low. Uh, this is the same thing as digital write, as the digital write function in Arduino, uh, you can, where you can set it high or low, same function. So that's how you uh, control a pin. And now let's look at uh, our simple program for blinking an LED. So let's say you have uh, wired an LED up to pin, uh, what pin are we using? 13, pin 13. And we're using our regular LED circuit, right? We've got the LED, uh, we've got its uh, cathode connected to, um, actually not it's cathode, I'm sorry, it's anode connected to, the, um, to pin 13. It's cathode connected to a resistor, and the other end of the resistor goes to ground. So pin 13, if it's true, high, then the LED will light up. If it's false, it'll, it'll turn off. And so just to run through the program, first we import the Raspberry Pi GPIO library. Then we import time. Now the time library, I didn't mention this, but we're using time library because we want to use, um, we want to sleep. We need to pause in the program because we, this is blinking. So we want to turn it on, wait, turn it off, wait. So to do that waiting, we're going to call this sleep function. So we need the time library. So we import time. Then uh, GPIO.set mode, we set the mode to say, look, we're going to use the board, number, board pin numberings. Uh, then we say GPIO setup, we set the pin 13 to be an output because that we're, our LEDs connect to that. Then we have an infinite while loop, while true. GPIO, GPIO output uh, 13 comma true, uh, so you turn it on. Then time.sleep1, this is in seconds, so that's sleeping for one second. GPIO.output 13 false, so you turn the light off, the LED off, and then you wait another second and you continue and it'll just blink. Now one thing to note, <clears throat> a difference between this and Arduino, writing this code, is the Arduino explicitly had these two different functions, the setup function and the loop function. And the setup function would want, run one time at the beginning of uh, when you powered it on, and then the loop function would just run over and over forever. So notice that this Python code that we have here, it doesn't have a setup function and a loop function, but it has exactly the same breakdown of the code. So note the while loop, while true that infinite while loop, that you're going to see in every embedded system, okay, an infinite while loop. You always do that because you always want that because you always want the device to be running code while it's powered on, so you don't want it to just complete. It shouldn't complete. It should always be running code. So there's an infinite while loop, but in the Py with Python, we have to explicitly put that while loop in there. In the Arduino, it had a while loop, but we didn't have to have while true in there in our C code. We just put, wrote a function called loop, and the uh, Arduino environment implicitly, it's basically it's stuck in a while loop and we didn't see it. So it was implicit for us there. But here in Python, we have to explicitly put this infinite while loop. Now note the code before the while loop. The code before the while loop is what we would put in the setup function of an Arduino, because it runs one time, right off, right at the beginning, and then it never runs again, because after that, first, that code runs, you're in that infinite loop and you just stay in that infinite loop. So although it looks different than an Ar Arduino sketch, it has exactly the same structure, really. Okay, so uh, that blinking LED program, we just uh, we drove a pin, made it high, low, and turned off and on the LED. We also want to be able to read inputs from the outside world uh, to read sensors and things like this, buttons, whatever the sensor might be. So how do you do that? First, you say GPIO setup, 
to change to set the direction of the pin, set the pin to be an input. So GPIO 13 comma GPIO in. So we set the direction of the pin as an input. Then we can call GPIO dot input uh, with a pin, the pin number as this argument, and that returns the value, either true or false. So it reads whatever the value is on the pin. It only reads digital inputs. So this again is different than the Arduino. If you remember with the Arduino, you can also read analog inputs, right? So Arduino, you had um, digital read. This is equivalent to digital read. Our GPIO.input function is equivalent to digital read on the Arduino. You also had an analog read on, uh, on the Arduino. And what would happen with the analog read is it would read in the, the analog value and then it would convert it. It would use an analog to digital converter that's built in to uh, convert it to a, a digital number and that would get returned. We don't have that in Raspberry Pi. So Raspberry Pi doesn't have this, uh, doesn't have this built in A to D converter, analog to digital converter that we can access uh, from the Python code. So we can only read digital data. But uh, that's a limitation of Raspberry Pi, uh, at least of this library. Thank you.